not filming. You can see with your eyes. <laughs> But you, you, don't have, eyes, you don't have don't authority you? out here. I'm not even sure you have it in there. I don't see but. a line. Apparently, I do have authority. Now, you have eyes. You can use your eyes without using that camera. Blind. You oh. make people uncomfortable. You're blocking a door. This Ridleyo is brought to you by friends of Blockchain.info. It's a great place for Bitcoins to go. The University of New Hampshire's anti-sex trafficking presentation. Presumably, all of us at it are opposed to abuses against women. I certainly am, but the three speakers all worked for organizations which have abused tens of thousands of women, at least. One of them still does work for such an organization. The New Hampshire Attorney General's office puts women in concrete boxes for committing victimless crimes. The United Nations, which this woman used to work for, has committed widespread sexual violations against minors, mostly women, girls, and the Boston Police Department, which this woman used to work for, has thrown many women in jail for victimless crimes. So hypocrisy draws me to the scene. Given a chance, I would have, hopefully, many relatively difficult questions for these speakers. But all three of them in theory, should have the ability to get through those questions fairly well, provided they do not attempt to censor, provided they do not attempt to prevent videography. That's the only thing they can really do to make themselves look awful. And it's exactly what this one, Aaron Albright, formerly of the Boston Police Department, does. Since most individuals, including me, are banned from using recording devices inside the speech, I grab a few shots through the door from outside the speech. There are several reasons why I do this. First, I've generally been allowed to do it before, although I've only done it right before and right after speeches. Second, uh, folks have sort of escalated the censorship, and so I feel the need to respond with a slight lawful escalation of my own. I just need to tell you that if you're not out of the way of the speakers, you have to call security. So. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna, no cameras in the I guess I'm going to get video of you calling security then. You see, they've never tried to stop me from filming in the hallways before. They've never tried to stop me from interviewing people on the way to these events. It gets a little bit complicated because mostly what I film here is World Affairs Council events. This is technically a University of New Hampshire event with World Affairs Council participation. So new people are interacting with me, but the fact remains every time I've been to this spot I've gotten more interference. In PR terms, the harder you bite a porcupine, the more it is supposed to hurt. So that's one reason why I feel a need to open the door uh, during the speech and get a couple of shots. A second reason for doing it, as I mentioned before, is that I don't know what all the speakers look like. I need to be, uh, be able to visually identify them so they can ask them questions when they come out. I'd like to be able to show viewers about how many people are attending roughly and grab a shot of each speaker in case I never get another chance. The event is in some form or fashion surely taxpayer funded you deserve to see a little bit of how it looked in there. I can do this without taking the camera in. I've been invited into the event as long as I leave the camera outside. That means I can open the door. Obviously, I can't go in or out without opening the door, and I've been invited to do both, just like the rest of the public. I cannot rely on the university's official videographer to get me the pictures I want. And in fact, three days after the event, I have still been unable to find any sort of video that the university has uploaded from this event. I am all there is, as best I can tell. Even if that videographer did a stellar job, then we run into a question of copyright. Here you see one government rule getting in the way of another alleged government rule. UNH tends to try and copyright what it produces, so I would not be able to safely use video shot by this videographer. When was the last time you used video from someone who was your political opponent or someone who was trying to restrict you? 
<laughs> when was the last time you took their video and uploaded it commercially? If you've done it, you've taken a copyright risk. Additionally, the fact that this is primarily a UNH event makes it more fully public than the usual World Affairs Council events held here. If a publicly funded university sponsors something, that is slightly different from uh, the you know ostensibly private World Affairs Council maybe renting the room. Lastly, there is the statement placed on uh, the University of New Hampshire's website, manchester.unh.edu, quote, this is a free event and is open to the public. That posting for this event says nothing about recording restrictions. Neither does the World Affairs Council calendar. I don't know for sure what may have appeared on the World Affairs Council index page a few days ago because it's been changed. Not surreptitiously, but in a routine manner. They always update it to reflect the latest events that are upcoming. So, I have a lot of reasons to push it a little bit further this day. After the event is over, I need to keep an eye on the speakers. I'm concerned that they might exit out a back entrance. If they do, that would mean I would need to run downstairs, try and catch them uh, as they exit the building. It affects my decisions. Well, I'm not allowed to cross into the, the room, is that correct? But I'm not in the room. I'm going to go ahead and prop the door open. Converse with us without the camera in the middle of us. You're perfectly free to discuss with me one on one without a camera. Or you're perfectly free to enter. There's no one stopping you. I can enter. I can enter with the camera now. No, or the camera, though. Okay. You can enter as a human being without your camera that's, with you. That's inappropriate. You should be letting cameras. Is it in. inappropriate to call you human being? I'm sorry. Then I won't call you human being again. That's not what you I was saying. You have two eyes. You can look like everyone else, and you cannot make our guests uncomfortable. How would you like to do that? Well, this that's the choice is, you have. Has this event, event publicly the funded at all? The choice you have is to enter without your camera or to stay out here and preferably not stick your camera in everyone's face. Is there any okay? taxpayer money going into this event? Have a good night. Are you taxpayer funded in any way? Okay, look, can you just please? I'm gonna try to leave the door open so I can see right. what's going on in there. Not filming, you can see with your eyes. <laughs> You, you, have have, eyes, you don't, don't have you? authority out here. I'm not even sure you have it in there. I don't see a line. Apparently, I do have authority. Now, you have eyes. You can use your eyes without using that camera. Blocked. You make people uncomfortable. You're blocking a door. Thank you for speaking. Thank you. If you're going, Aaron? Yeah, question for you. Um, why did you want... Okay. Is it like a two-party consent? So if you're going to film anything, you need the consent of both parties, and I don't consent. This Ridleyo is brought to you by friends of Blockchain.info It's a great place for Bitcoins to go. Some call it the best site to create a free online Bitcoin wallet. They have apps for Android and iPhone, plus get this, blockchain lets the encryption for your account happen inside your browser. That way even the site's owner can't access the account. It's just for you. Blockchain.info, it's a great place for Bitcoins to go.